the rifts to other side are opening and my adventure map will never be the same. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're building a pocket dimension. And also we're gonna expand on one of my biggest builds of all time. This is Avid Adventures episode 20. And this is some darkness for a dramatic, <laughs> stupid intro. How is it going everybody? My name's Avid and I've spent the last two years working on this adventure map with one goal in mind. Add an end game to Minecraft. Let's be honest, purple space lizard? Nah, not really cutting it. I've spent over 4,000 hours on this adventure map alone and we're not even done with the main story. So today we are going to be working on a brand new mechanic called the Rifts to Other Side. And if that's at all confusing, I don't blame you. I introduced Other Side a year ago with this 35 wave tower defense boss. You really should watch that video. But to catch you up, basically after defending for 35 waves, it turns out it's not enough to protect the orb. Zaylim and her forces of evil are coming. And it's up to us to save the orb and protect all of humanity. Not gonna lie, that that is some heavy lore, saving the universe from an extra dimensional uh, being. But now that you're all caught up, we can finally talk about the portals and check this out. We made these together on a live stream and look, they grow and they live and they scream and die and I love them. And I probably should mention during the live stream, I got a little distracted because the portals, they look a lot like eyes. So before we knew it, I was making a face and then the face was done and we all named him Jiminy. Jiminy. 15 minutes after that, there was a cult following with fan art and what can I say? I love you guys. <laughs> so the portals, they look awesome, but like what do they actually, you know, do? Picture this. You're doing a little bit of mining in full uh, unenchanted diamond gear. You know, as you do. La -dee -da -dee -da. When all of a sudden, an other side portal spawns and scares the poop out of you. Now notice at the top, this portal has some kind of lifetime to it. So ideally uh, you have to do something within that amount of time. But also this portal is gonna be sp <laughs> spawning. Some uh, some enemies if you don't act fast enough this portal is going to self-destruct But also another option is players could actually right-click to go through this portal and go to other side or well a, a pocket dimension of other side now chances are my thumbnail or title gave away what i'm gonna make in that portal because future avid is a sucker for clickbait but even still we have so many other things to work on this episode so i'm gonna keep you guys on your toes like look at this crazy door here that i am never going to mention ever again i will literally never mention this door ever again in any of my content so don't skip ahead and maybe think about subscribing now Let's get to work. Ah, new clouds rest. To think I made this entire build in one episode with Zepplington. What was I thinking? But even still, it is uh, largely unfinished and now it's covered in snow. Gosh, there is so much to this beautiful build. And the good news is in the time since we built this, the people of the deep have made a little progress. Well, okay, I, I have to, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build that now. <clears throat> um, uh, Time-lapse, time-lapse. New Cloud's Rest is a beacon of hope for humanity. And it was built by none other than the people of the deep who had been locked away beneath the ocean for over a decade, completely unaware of the horrors that had befallen the world above. Aided by their machine intelligence, Al, there was nothing they couldn't do, including taking on the demigod, also known as Ohm, who plunged the world into the second age of darkness. This was humanity's last chance to reclaim a world that was lost, a chance to seal away Ohm forever and bring about the long age of prosperity. The people of the deep are back and they're not gonna go down without a fight. Citizens of the deep, I welcome you to New Cloud's Rest. Please take boxes, unpack. We need to get this place in order. Ah oh man, it feels good to be back in New Cloud's Rest. One of the reasons I love this build so much is that it merges high tech with this ancient Greek architecture. And it's just like 
nothing I've ever seen before. Even these statues have a purpose. It's the people of the deep harnessing machine intelligence for the first time, assimilating that intelligence as a part of their society and becoming one with the AI. And of course, Al is going to become a central point in the war against Ulm. Because remember, these people are preparing for war. And the only way they're going to win is with their incredible technology. This is an artificial portal to other side. Well, it, it doesn't actually work yet uh, because they're missing one key ingredient that uh, our adventurers are going to help them find. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is for another episode because now we need to get back to our original portal. What, did you think I was gonna go back to our undulating eyeball from the beginning of the episode? Uh-uh, Rosewood, also known as the town that does this, <laughs> at midnight, I love this so much, was where Avid Adventures began. And if you didn't know, Rosewood, uh, or Vilethorn, when it's in its evil state, has a portal room of its own. Deep down in this decked out inspired dungeon lies a boss room that happens to have four portals at each of the corners. Gosh, it's been a minute since I've been down here. For those who don't know, this is the site of the Curse of Vilethorn boss. Actually, you know what? This is the Curse of Vilethorn. Ah, it's so cool. But before this room was turned into its fleshy uh, nastiness, it was actually a meeting room and a portal room to far away lands. For instance, this blue portal here will lead to the frozen keep once uh, I convince Zepplington to build it for me. <laughs> and the yellow and green ones are a bit of a secret, but guys, does this purple one kind of look familiar to you? Yes, I know it looks like my beautiful eyes, but also this was Rosewood's teleport to other side. Now, if you choose to take the good path in the Vilethorn quest line, then you fight waves of enemies in this room until the curse is weak enough to uh, where you can cut out his brains. You cut them all, you cut out all the brains. After that, you free the town of Rosewood from its curse and the mayor comes down from his mansion to greet you. You see, Din was stuck in a stasis from a magical spell that also cursed the town. And he says, I need to find a way to restore the portal room. It's the only way we stand a fighting chance against Ulm. So everyone's trying to get to other side. Why? Well, we're gonna get to that. But first things first, I wanna break down this portal for you guys because it's actually kinda cool. Just like everything else I build, it all starts with an armor stand. Using armor stands, you can render particles in the direction the armor stand is facing. So the blue line there, if I were to flip this on, there we get particles. And of course, using commands, we can change the direction that the armor stand is facing. So now I can start to slowly point it up. And with this command, once it gets all the way up to the top, I just point it back down and then we can speed it up. So then we add just one last command to place particles behind it. And now look at that, it's a ring of of particles and you only need four commands to do it, not bad. As for the eyeball in the center, I'm using something called an item display. You can render any item you want in the game at any size and rotation and I use these a ton in my submarine minigame which is like my biggest coolest project I've ever worked on. You guys should totally check out that video. So then putting all of those pieces together, you get this amazing portal effect. But guys, I think we can do better. Wouldn't it be cool if while you were walking around, this portal followed you around like it was watching you. For item displays, this is actually super easy. All you have to do is use the billboard property and I'm going to set it to vertical. Then when I spawn it in, now this item follows me around wherever I go. The harder part is going to be with the particles because yeah, while the eyeball follows me around, I want the particles to also trace around the outside of the eye. You can get an armor stand to point in the same direction as the player. Problem is when you plug that in, and it, uh, it makes the circle, but the circle is 90 degrees in the wrong direction. So all I should have to do is add one more command after that to rotate it 90 degrees. That is, that's perfect. Putting it all together, this, yes, <laughs> check this out. So the eye is following me around, the particles are updating, and uh, I didn't think this thing could get any cooler, but yeah, it, it actually got cooler. Now we have the portals, but where do they go? Now it's time that I reveal where all of the portals lead. This giant 
rectangular unfinished room uh, that we are going to turn into a pocket dimension of other side. First, I want to show you guys this really cool texturing technique that I came up with when I made the last other side room. The first thing that I did was make sure that the top layer is all some kind of light block, in this case, pearlescent frog lights. So for the next layer, what I'm going to do is place down a bunch of leaves and slowly, oh, that is so cool to watch, slowly Slowly, these leaves are going to start to decay, and that decay is nice and random and pixely, so it looks like the cosmic microwave background of the universe. And then I replace out the jungle leaves with magenta stained glass. The next stage of this ceiling is going to get a little, uh, moist, because we're actually going to use different types of coral in this ceiling, and uh, the coral's gonna die without some kind of water source. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put down a temporary layer of glass, and then I'm gonna fill the layer above that with water, then I'm gonna swap out that glass layer for leaves, and I have a repeating command block that's running. Whenever a leaf decays, I replace it with a barrier block. So now we're gonna get the brain coral blocks in there. Oh, that is very pink. Um... Maybe, maybe a little less than that. <laughs> that's a lot. Okay, that's looking better. And now we can try to do the brain coral block. There we go. That's a little bit better. And then after that, we are going to do the bubble coral, which adds, uh-oh. Oh, okay. No, the water. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, this is going to be a mess. Oh, I used the brain coral, not the block. Oh, dummy. Bubble coral. Coral. Aha. And that is how you make this uh, weird, obscure ceiling. And most people would just use World Edit or Axiom, so I don't know. I showed you something stupid. Enjoy. Time lapse time. Guys, this one is one for the books. Uh, look, I had no idea what it was going to be like and how long it would take to create an entire pocket dimension in Minecraft, but I figured I had to start with the floor. And here you can see this gorgeous purple height map looking floor that I think turned out perfectly. And we're not even close to being done. The way I did this is actually pretty neat. I grabbed a bunch of desert and then dropped it in my underground area below. Then layer by layer, I changed the sand over to a purple color and yeah, it's ridiculous cool looking. After that, I started working on the foliage and what I wanted was a bunch of different trees of different sizes and colors and I wanted the trees to also be the source of lighting for this area. All in all, I was able to come up with five very different looking trees. I love how they turned out and then I coated them all into structure blocks and then it was time to place them. In my inventory are seven different structure blocks with the same tree at different rotations and mirrors, which means that with the same structure, I can get a bunch of visual variety. Variety. All that was left was to load the structure blocks. As you can see here, each one is a tree and I had hundreds of structure blocks to run. Now, just like in real life, I wanted the trees to grow in their own separate clusters. And the benefit of creating rules like this during our builds is that the end result ends up looking very believable. And just look at it. It looks amazing. All that was left now was the tower. Now, I'll explain a bit more about what this tower does after the time lapse. But basically, this tower is the source of an extra dimensional power here in other side. So I wanted it to be this beautiful central focal point that players could see from every angle in this area. Now, my work was done, complete. I mean, I can't believe how stunningly beautiful this pocket dimension turned out. I had no idea it was going to look this good. Guys, welcome to other side. Um, um, I'm a little teary eyed at uh, how cool this is. This this is the coolest thing. I do. I say that all the time. This might be the coolest thing I I've I've ever made. Gosh, I mean, where to begin from the plant life to the ceiling, the tower that's looming in the center of this beautiful pocket dimension. And also uh, there are orbs. 
everywhere. But wait, you say, I thought this orb was special. I mean, it's protecting all of humanity from Zaleem. Well, uh, sorta. It all has to do with this tower, also known as the Tower of the Celestial. It was planted here by the old gods when the universe was created. And as it turns out, these orbs are just an extension of the tower's energy being broadcast out to the far reaches of other side. So it kind of makes sense why everybody wants to find this place because this tower is the source of some unimaginable power. Taking a look inside, I absolutely love this room. I love that you can see the sky from down here and this room is just very strange looking. Reminds me a lot of the Matrix. <laughs> and when our adventurers get here, depending on if they were a good guy or a bad guy in Vilethorn, they'll be greeted by two different people. To those good guys out there, yes, Din did manage to find this place and he's going to use the tower to restore the Rosewood portal room. And for our bad boys in the audience, Cassius found this place after we corrupted Rosewood forever and he intends to use the power to serve Olm. Regardless of which side you've taken, the task here is going to be the same. Zaleem is sending her forces of evil to take over the tower because with its power, she can return to the overworld and add every living creature to her hive mind. Which by the way, that's not good for anyone. Not even Olm wants that. So here's how this is gonna work. Zaleem will be spawning in portals all throughout this area. And from these portals will spawn her minions of evil who are going to make their way towards the orbs, which are basically just extensions of the tower. It's up to the player to defeat these monsters as well as close the portals. Think of it kind of like a pillager raid, but uh, a lot cooler. So the first thing I wanna tackle is how do we get the monsters to attack the orbs? Because as we know, controlling mob AI is possible, though it's a massive pain in the butt. So. How do we control mob AI? Believe it or not, in this case, it's gonna take one command. Just like our particle command with the eyeballs, we can point monsters in a specific direction and tell them to just walk there. And honestly, for our tower defense, this is pretty much all we needed to do. But other side, other side is lumpy. And these lumps are kind of problematic when you use a command like this because the monsters, they, they aren't affected by gravity now. So all we have to do is tack on an extra command that says, if if the block below the monster is air, then drop them down a block. All right, that works pretty well. But of course, there are two sides to every lump and having them walk through the lumps also doesn't look very good. So that's as simple as just making another command where if they're inside of a block, then it pushes them up one and then back down. And okay, that didn't look great. That looked that looked kind of bad. Is it worth fixing? Ah, uh, yes. So I need these guys to experience gravity. And if we're teleporting them every single tick in a repeat command block, then they'll never experience gravity. So the way to do that is to run these commands every other tick, which means now the zombies are experiencing gravity every other tick. And that is looking much better now. No more floaty zombies. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's normal. Was that too technical? Let me know down in the comments if that was too nerdy for you. Okay, so coming back down here, I now have it so that when monsters are spawned by Zaleem, they'll walk towards the nearest orb. But you'll also notice that the orbs are taking a little bit of damage. That damage is actually determined by the health of the monster that hits it. Also, that means if you've done a bit of damage to a monster, it'll actually damage the tower a little less because, you know, it's like its life force is less potent. I, I don't know, <laughs> you get it. Finally, I know some of you are gonna point out this bug where the monsters are nodding their heads. <laughs> I'm not patching this, that is absolutely adorable. They're like super excited to get to the orb. Look at those little monsters. So we've got monsters and orbs and a tower that is under attack in other side. The question is, how are players going to defend it? Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Nova. This legendary blade was used by Din to end the first age of darkness. And today our heroes are going to get access to all of its magnificent power in order to protect the tower. Hey, that rhymed. So what are all the powers of Nova? Well, if I'm honest, I really wanna push the limit of how many different ways we can interact with a sword. Let's start with the easy one first. Dropping a weapon, now that I can do. Our special sword has a 
custom tag called Nova. So all I should have to do is see if there's an item with that special tag on the ground next to me. And then we run a bunch of commands to do this, a sweeping attack that's going to hit a bunch of enemies at a distance. For the next attack, when Nova's in our offhand and we attack, I want to launch a magic missile. Whenever Nova's in my offhand, I summon an interaction entity and teleport it wherever I'm facing. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a camel dying, by the way. Oh, you know, I miss the camel dying, but eh, this is a lot better. When players right click with Nova in their offhand, it creates a saturation and healing aura that lasts a couple of seconds. As for the final attack, I actually came up with two. Now to demo this, let's go down below. When Nova's in your main hand, I want this thing to be a melee powerhouse. So naturally, when you hold down shift, you begin to charge your supernova attack hold on just wait just wait just wait yes that is the most epic fart of my life and when nova's in our offhand i wanted to act like a support weapon so it gives you speed it also allows you to heal yourself and when you hold shift it launches you into the air and when you hit the ground it does a ground pound yes oh my gosh this is gonna be so much fun just flying around this area and attacking monsters in all different ways guys the next time I see you, we will be taking on this challenge. So, here we go. Here's how I picture this playing out. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. My name's Avid, and this is my survival playthrough of Avid Adventures. In the last episode, we just beat Other Side. And if I know Avid, then man, he has something planned for us. So right now, I'm doing a little bit of caving and just trying to... Excuse me. What? Look, I don't know what this thing is, but I'm not into it. I don't want that. All right, let's go home now. Ex All right, fine. I guess we're going in the portal, you guys. Okay, well, this is gonna go well. Oh, Tower of the Celestial. Well, Avid, you really outdid yourself with this one. Guys, you should really like and subscribe to that guy. Okay, the tower. Well, there's nowhere really else to go but in. <coughs> oh, hero. <clears throat> Hero of Rosewood. Hi! <clears throat> How did you find this place? Uh, it, it kind of found me. No matter. I'm thankful you've arrived. Oh no. <clears throat> As you can tell, I'm in pretty bad shape. What happened? I came here to repair the Rosewood portal room, but Zaylene, she found me. I held her off as long as I could, but they got me pretty badly. Oh, Din, I'm so sorry. <coughs> Din, hang in there, buddy. You're gonna be just fine. We'll get you out of here. I know she'll be back. She's trying to escape other side, and this tower is her ticket out of here. The Tower of the Celestial was built by the old gods when the universe was created. It's one of the anchor points of reality, keeping time and space woven in harmony. There are others, such as the Citadel, but, well, that was lost long ago. I've been oh, there. You've been to the Citadel? Yeah, it's where all the quests are. What do you mean I've been to the Citadel? Hmm. Olm is up to his dirty tricks again. What? <coughs> I'm sorry to ask this, but we don't have much time. Zaylim will return at any moment. Um, no! The fabric of reality is in your hands now, hero. Din! Zaylim is coming! Now that is just the good guy path. If you guys want to see the lore and dialogue of the bad guy path, come join my Patreon server or you'll have to wait till this map releases to the public. Now, let's play this thing! Yes! We finally have Nova! Let's kick some alien butt! So you're gonna notice here, there are pink particles. Those point to the nearest portal. So I'm gonna throw Nova into my offhand and try to get there as quickly as possible. The longer these portals stay open, the more monsters will spawn out of them. And from my playtesting, it's really all about crowd control. You wanna shut these portals down and get rid of all of the mobs. And now we're starting to see some shamblers spawning, which are skeletons. I'm gonna fire at them from far away and then hopefully another one doesn't spawn. Yes, we are in good shape. There we go, we got super lucky with this one. Let's close that out. We did not even a single monster spawned out of that. Heck yeah. Ah, oh, it is super satisfying to use all of Nova's abilities. Another rift has opened, it is straight ahead. Probably the best way to deal with them is to go supernova. Come on, explode, let's go! Yes, explode. 
so far we're doing okay zaleem's forces are almost at half we just need to stay on top of the portal spawns I see it i see it lots of guys are coming out now so the lower her forces get the more guys are going to spawn out of these portals come on i whack them a bunch and then explode yes worth it next portal where is it where is it this way let's go all right superhero launch get in there yes broke the portal couple of shamblers uh oh yes that those are the guys i'm scared of the defiled we have another portal spawning right next to us that's super lucky let's get up there come on uh horrors have spawned out of there there we go i took care of them that orb is definitely gonna die and now demons have spawned outside of a portal i'm going to ignore the fact they just killed an orb uh yeah this is not this is not good ready oh this is bad come on Yes! I can't see anything, but I definitely killed a lot of them. I'm just gonna throw magic missiles at him. Yeah, he's getting his he's getting blown up. Yes! There we go. Slow but effective. I'll take it. Okay, let's get to the tower. Oh, we did it, you guys. That was intense. I'm not gonna lie. That was a little harder than I thought it was gonna be. We lost a few orbs in the process, but our tower held strong, so not bad. And now, this looks like our exit. So, I guess I'll see you on the other side. Wait. Where are we? <laughs> 